good morning my friends. We are in Topeka, Kansas today. We're gonna hit a few spots, but the first one, kind of notorious, so I wanted to go over there and show you what the neighbors of this establishment have done in protest. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Kind of a nice neighborhood on the surface. So here we are at the Topeka, Kansas Equality House. Now the Equality House, as you might have guessed, is for everyone. And it's pretty colorful, pretty nice. And it started out as just this house and then the neighbors got involved in the protest and they did it as well. Let's take a look at that. Now if you're wondering what are they protesting, well, their neighbors right directly across the street are in my opinion some of the most hateful people that you ever hear stories about in the news the westboro baptist church this is the church of people that go to funerals and scream hateful things and as you can see what's facing us all of the messages they have there that is what the Equality House is protesting. Now this is my kind of protest because here they have a community garden and they have a little sign that says, feel free to take some veggies. They're just promoting the love, they're just sharing the love. Now let's go around the house because as you can see behind, there's another building that they've painted. Now look at what's on the side. Looks like they've allowed people to come up and write things on the side and they also have a sign in the yard that says feel free to walk in the yard take pictures spread the love spread the equality yeah when I heard that this was here I just wanted to come by and take a look I'm not into people that spread hatred like that so when somebody's doing something nice want to show it then if you look at their flag they actually have an American flag upside down with those colors on there kind of a slap in the face up there so now we're gonna take off and we're gonna go check out the Evil Knievel Museum we have arrived. Part of the reason I did that Evil Knievel vlog the other day about George Hamilton was because I knew I was coming here. I am really interested in the idea and all of the stunts and everything Evil Knievel did even though he wasn't the greatest guy. I know they have a handful of things here and I really wanted to check it out so let's check it out. I was definitely surprised that they didn't have it in Butte, Montana. That's where he was based out of but We'll check it out here in Topeka. That was the Snake River Canyon jump and a lifelong Harley man. Always did those jumps on a Harley long before they ever made bikes meant for jumping. And there's Evil, always sporting the number one. One of the reasons that Evil used to wear that outfit was because he was an Elvis and Liberace fan. He loved that style of flash and so that's why that suit that he'd always jump in kind of look like the Elvis jumpsuits. Here's a statue of Evil that they made after his Kings Island jump, the one that he said was his retirement jump in 1975. They used to display this in his office in Butte, Montana. And that was the theme park I grew up going to. A man can fall many times in life, but he is never a failure until he refuses to get up. Evil can evil. Here as you walk in, they have a timeline of Evil's career and what he broke doing what jumps and I kind of had to laugh at this part because it says longest reported stretch of unconsciousness 29 days and he just kept doing it just kept getting back up there and jumping that is either the definition of fearless or definition of crazy here it says he had more than 60 jumps without a crash now this is great this is commemorating the largest jump audience that he ever had, which was 70,000 people in Wembley. You know the story behind that is that when they 
that stadium actually held like a hundred thousand I think they said and when tickets went on sale he had only sold like 3,000 tickets or something like that and so he went over to promote it and he just basically was being a heel every time they would talk to him he'd say yeah I'm just coming over here to uh, let you guys thank us for saving you in the war and he would say things that would get people like you know motivated to hate him so then they would come out to the jump to see if he would crash that was one of the things you'd always say is like yeah people don't necessarily want to see me die but if i crash they don't want to miss it now they have a virtual jumping experience and evil can evil jump so i paid the extra five bucks and we're going to do that while we're here and there he is getting ready to make a jump that picture right at the top of the ramp As we go in here, you can see the back of one of the trucks that would have transported all of his stuff for the jumps. Then over here, take a look at this. It says this is an exact replica of Evil's first stunt bike he used to promote the Honda motorcycle dealership that he uh, was working at. He was trying to get people to come in and uh, and buy and he was having trouble so he, he ended up getting um, a box of rattlesnakes and tied mountain lions underneath a jump spot and he jumped it and when he came down he accidentally hit the box of rattlesnakes and rattlesnakes and everything went all over the crowd and it was a total catastrophe but he said the one thing he learned out of that was after he was uh after a couple days afterward people started coming up to him going okay what are you going to do next <laughs> now this exhibit represents the caesar's palace jump they say this would have been um the same type of bike that he used for the jump. They said he always used two bikes per performance. He would do one for wheelies and one for jumps. And they said that they've researched and researched and they've found that the, the actual jump bike that he did at Caesar's, Caesar's Palace does not exist anymore. But they show the gear behind showing that's what he would have worn. And then there's a picture of him in front of Caesar's Palace the day of the jump. Now don't worry, they're not all replica bikes. They do have some original stuff here, I believe. So after Evil started doing all those jumps, he decided to go to Hollywood and become a stuntman. And he put together his own Daredevil stunt cycle crew. That was their emblem. It wasn't profitable is the problem. People liked it, but it just they weren't drawn enough people so the group basically split and evil just kept doing the jumps on his own and became his own entity Now how evil got the name they say is that he was locked up in prison and there was a guy named Knoffel and he was Knievel and the officers jokingly said we've got awful Knoffel and evil Knievel in here and he liked the name so he stuck with it Look at that bike. It says this bike was rotting into obscurity until it was discovered by the Evil Knievel Museum team. It was acquired in almost unrecognizable condition and was respectfully restored by the team here at the historic Harley Davidson. And this model in particular is a 1969 Laverda American Eagle and it said um, two of the bikes were given to Evil Knievel. Um, he jumped his 1969 American Eagle 750s 13 times in a two-year span, landing seven times successfully while crashing six times. And as you can tell, they pretty much have an exhibit, or at least a um, acknowledgement of every jump that he did. You can see souvenir programs and things. Here's when he was in Ontario, kind of about an hour away from where I live says that he did a 19 car jump which is right there and they've got a program here autographed by him then this poster is showing him making the jump or at least three different time periods of the jump and then up there you can see happy landings 
Now said this is his 1970s Harley Davidson. Evo used Harley Davidson motorcycles exclusively from the 70 to 77 period during the height of his career. This is the actual jump bike he performed on in 1971 and 1972. It says this bike piloted evil to a world record jump over 19 cars. Whoa. That jump was featured in the 1971 biographical Evil Knievel film starring George Hamilton. It says this bike is one of the most rare and original of Evil Knievel's motorcycles in existence. And the leathers that are on display are the actual leather suit worn by him during his jumps. So let's take a look at that. That is awesome. He even signed it right there on the gas tank. Above the one. And then check out the original leathers. They're pretty dirty too. Especially down at the legs. Evil Knievel jumping at the Kansas State Fair. The outcome was successful with jumping over 10 Kenworth semis. Well, I'll tell you something. Nobody on the face of this earth has ever outjumped me. And I know that the American Hot Rod Association and drag strips around the country have promoted youth to the extent where some of them have lost their lives to risking their necks for a dollar. But there have been motorcycle jumpers before me. That's where I got the idea. And there will be motorcycle jumpers after me. Now, why I'm the only one to make a couple of million dollars at it is a good question. I've spent more money on motorcycles, equipment, diamonds, women, and booze in one day than the rest of them have spent in a lifetime. There's an answer as to why I'm the best and why I do that. You'll have to come to the fair to find out. I did everything by the seat of my pants. That's why I got hurt so much. There you can see the parachute deploying behind him. And that's the same chute that's right here in this case. So it says this is the motorcycle that Evil was given in 1972 when they, uh, Harley Davidson had updated their body frame and made it a little bit lighter um, so that he could make better jumps. And he crashed it on the very first practice jump he attempted in Georgia. Um, they said that this is also the bike though that he used for his Los Angeles Coliseum jump that is um, one of his most significant jumps they said in history. And this was when he first started using the um, tank and the tailpiece painted this way. They said, color me lucky. Now as we're coming around here, we can see a few bikes in our path. That's the Wembley bike, it says. Evil debuted his new paint scheme in 1974 on the Wide World of Sports for this. And um, it was by a man named George Sedlak. And George became Evil's painter for the helmets, the tanks, and the tail sections for the rest of his career. It says he painted many different tanks and tails for Evil in the 70s. Um, and this is the bike that he jumped the 13 buses in London and Wembley. But it was not a successful jump. There he is sitting alone in Wembley Stadium. See, he's getting ready for the jump right there. There he is on that motorcycle. Oh, 
Oh, there's another one of his custom built gas tanks. You can see it says evil at the very top and then has him jumping over dollars. <laughs> And they said in his office in Butte, Montana, at one point, people that went in there said he had a safe built into there, like a big room safe, like in a bank. And you'd walk in there and it was just like dollar bills. Like it was just all money. Had no idea how much he had in there. Now here's some mementos from his King's Island jump. August 25th, 1975. You can see it right up here on the button. Now this exhibit says that this is the uh, the costume, or this is the suit worn at Kings Island by Robbie Knievel, Evil's son, who was also doing some stunts as a kid. I think he was like 13 at the time. You can see he signed the belt. Happy landings. Now this is showing all of the fan mail that Evil got when he was injured. He had um, broken both arms in an accident and he received over 300 letters by kids wishing him well that were never opened. So when they brought him to the museum, the museum was the first place to ever open them, they said. You can see down here, Mr. Evil Knievel. And sadly, for as much money as Evil made, he spent tons of it, and he was proud to spend it. He said, hey, you can't take it with you. I'm gonna enjoy it while I'm here. And at one point, he spent so much um, on clothes and just everything that they ended up having to have a big sale and they just sold a ton of his stuff in Butte, Montana. Now here he is wearing the, there's a helmet right here of his, Color Me Lucky written across it. And there he is wearing it right there. Now it says, these are actual suits worn by Evil and Robbie during the world tour jumps. Evil changed to the nylon moto suit uh, for his final few jumps in shows of his career. So this would have been the nylon suit that they were mentioning that Evil switched over to. You can see him in that photo wearing it. So he switched over to that and it says it was donated by a golfing friend of Evil's from Florida. There's a photo of Robbie and Evil together wearing those same suits. And Robbie did break a lot of his father's records, but like Robbie said, Nobody cares what you can do once you've got a bike made for that and once Evil's already done it or, you know, it just doesn't matter. You're not Evil Knievel, so nobody cares. Whoa, there's the big Mack truck. Whoa, that is so cool. They got the whole thing in here. <laughs> I think we can actually go inside too, I mean at least, at least you can see in the windows, so I would guess they would have it available to walk through. These are part of the ramps. There's a seat in there, burned up seat. And it says that these are the actual ramps that Evil used for his Caesars Palace and Wembley Stadium jumps and says he carried them in the trailer that we're looking at now. Um, it also says that these were saved from a field in Butte, Montana. Let's go see if there's a way to get inside or anything or if we can take a tour of it. Look inside the cab though, that's kind of cool. Whoa! <laughs> In style. This AMF hot seat. You can see the fan in there. And guess what, they do have it opened up, so let's go walk through. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Evil Knievel's. Oh no, we can't walk through it, but we can look in.
It looks like Elvis up there in that picture. Evil's Bar. And we can't go back to the bedroom, but if you look through there, you can see Evil's emblems on the sleeve of the shirts in there. And that's cool. If you look over there, you can see his cane. He always used to walk around with that cane. And that movie poster takes up the entire wall in here. That's a monster. So that's what that truck looked like before they did the paint job. And that's after. Here's another one of Evil's bikes in the back of this side of the trailer. And some ramps. Now they have a second floor. Let's go upstairs. It says, I created Evil Knievel, and then he sort of got away from me. Yeah, I'd say so. And this is showing that he was responsible for your little kids all of a sudden wanting to do bicycle jumps. And look up there. All right, let's go upstairs. Snake River Canyon jump site. What a catastrophe that was. And this is showing the Evil Knievel Sports Illustrated photo shoot. What he wore during that. Now there's his helmet from Wembley. Now this is cool. This is a display of all of Evil's personal clothes throughout his life. And there you can see him wearing that jacket. And that jacket is right there. There you can see Evil wearing that jacket, which is on display right here. There's his chuckle shirt. This is amazing. Look at this suit. That is incredible. I don't even know what that's made of, but that is amazing. <laughs> and then some overalls that he wore out golfing. You can see him in the background right there. And uh, Donnie and Marie. Clothes from Donnie and Marie. And they've got a little TV showing that appearance. So this is pretty much the coolest kiosk in the whole place. The canes, Evil used to have custom made so he could put wild turkey in them. They were hollow. And uh, there's one of the custom made canes that the family has donated. And then that helmet is the Caesar's Palace jump helmet, which they say other than the ramps are the only thing that they can find that uh, has to do with that jump. And then Evil's jewelry. And this is Evil's suit from when he did the movie Viva Knievel. And it says that the collar is signed by Evil on one side and George Hamilton on the other, who played evil in the movie. An evil can evil race car. That is one of Evil Knievel's cars. It was a Cadillac pickup. They said this was one of his most recognizable that he would be seen in. There's Evil with that car. Now apparently Evil rented this boat and he did so much to it while in the time that he rented it, um, including putting a helipad right there, that they made him buy the boat. <laughs> These are all worn by Robbie Knievel. And it says up there he holds 20 world records. Here's some of Evil's injuries on display. You can see some of his casts and Things like that, some of his pill bottles, Robert Knievel, it says, for the prescriptions. Look, there's one of his broken arm casts. There's a codeine bracelet. <laughs> and then this shows all the bones that Evil broke. Where all those dots are. Look at this amazing wall of photos. All jump photos and promotional items. He was a merchandising genius, at least for this time period. He knew what he was doing. And if you don't believe me, take a look. 
These are all Evil Knievel merchandise products. Big wheels and helmets and flashlights and chain lube for your bicycle. <laughs> Look at all that. Bicycle seats. Bicycles. Pinball machines and kids play sets. Toys. <laughs> Curtains for your bedroom. And of course the Evil Knievel Jump. That figure, those were so popular in their day. The wind up Evil Knievel Stuntman. There's Evil on the Tonight Show and look at that belt. Good grief. There he is on the Wheaties box. Even Evil Knievel Casino Machines. Now that's the experience that I paid for. The Evil Knievel Jump. We'll do that in a little bit. Not sure if I'll be able to show you it because it looks like we have virtual reality goggles for it. We'll see. If I can film it, I will. Alright, let's check this out. This was something. Now, he actually had three of these. And the first one they did... Um, well, the first reason that they had three was because Evil wanted to do test runs. And what ended up happening was the very first one he did, he invited the press to because they were purposely going to make it fail. He, um, he wanted to make it fail because he wanted the press to start promoting that this could be a dangerous, death-defying thing, which it was anyway, but he knew it would make it larger than life. So then they practiced with a second one, and the second one was supposed to work, but it didn't. It ended up losing, um, it didn't have the ability to go all the way across the canyon and end up crashing in the water. So the day of the actual third jump, or the third version of this that would jump and make the original, or the official jump, it was a pretty terrifying experience because Evil really, really didn't think he was going to make it out. And um, one of the things that they were worried about with the organizers was they said, this was right on the edge of a cliff. If Evil didn't make it across and he went down into the water, which is exactly what happened, he said, people are going to run to the ledge to see and people behind them are going to push them over and we're going to have a catastrophe. So the organizer ended up hiring the Hells Angels that were there for the event just as spectators, paid them a thousand bucks to make sure that nobody went past a specific barrier. And then of course, once the jump happened and it wasn't successful and he started coming down in the water, people started rushing those barricades. But how he got in there was they had a really, <laughs> I mean, the ramp was way more steep than this. It was like more like that. They actually had to put him, um, they had to get like a, basically a lift and carry him over and he had to slide into the compartment that way. You can see footage of this online. It's pretty crazy. And this one, actually, people thought afterward, they accused him of being a hoax. They accused him of purposely making it fail. But he, he always swore up and down that the third attempt was never meant to fail and that it wasn't a hoax. And there's Evil standing in front of it. And uh, there's that jacket that he's wearing in that photo, along with a $10,000 signed check. Made out to him from Snake River Canyon Enterprises. Now one of the reasons they said it failed is because the parachute came out too fast and they said that Evil was actually wearing the wrong suit that day, that they had given him the wrong suit and packed the wrong parachute. So that was one of the reasons that people thought it sounded suspicious. Oh, so this was the X2. The X1 was one that they crashed before. See, that's how steep the real ramp was they were going to be working with. From the G-Force, any switch on purpose. And I believe to be... She's getting instructions. She's going to do the jump now. Here we go. Anywhere she turns her head.
So if you come to the museum, I highly recommend the jump. You get to jump over a handful of cop cars and it really does feel like a real jumping experience. Like you can feel the motorcycle vibrating and I mean, it's just, it's pretty cool. And it's only five bucks, so I highly recommend you do it. Well, I think we might, uh, I think we might go down to the gift shop and call it a day here at the Evil Knievel Museum. Well, my friends, we are gonna call it a day here from the Evil Knievel Museum in Topeka, Kansas. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Come out and check it out. It is definitely worth it if you're an Evil Knievel fan or you just love the idea of someone not caring about whether they live or die to do a stunt. It was a pretty cool museum. Thank you Maria Day, Dr. Chris Roman, and Skybird for all making contributions to my channel. And come back and see me tomorrow. You never know where we'll end up around here and what we'll be doing. Have a great night, everyone, and goodbye.